doing it a little differently this morning in the sense that the last few days the sun beat me but today we're out before the sun appears so you can see it from the start I think there's some great magic in that when we see the sun coming out when it's already up it beat us you know people are here already actually for a while uh, to catch to catch that moment there's a French lady over there just met her now and she has music playing and she's going to be taping oh there's the sun I see it it's just very very tiny let's a little tiny sliver look there There you have it, like a little smile. Yeah, it's coming, that's it. That's the disc, that's the sun disc. Yes, definitely. Show us that smile. Where is it gone? There we are. So there comes the sun disc this morning at the Sea of Galilee. It's interesting something's happening today with the readings like happened two days ago so basically we're reading one thing we're reading the book of Kings in the first reading and that's a continuum but we're jumping over and back to other books in the Bible and today we're jumping to Chronicles and what was the book we were on two days ago? Uh, it was a follow-up on Elijah. Oh boy. Well, anyway. So now we're at the book of Chronicles and we're at the same story with the same fellow we had yesterday. That little baby who was uh, whisked away from a murder scene and his life was spared, the only one of his family. Queen, Queen Atalaya wanted to or Atalia wanted to do away with all that lineage you see that's oftentimes the temptation of power to do away with all the others not to have competition also to hide corruption also with a very vain desire to retain power always but that slips from fingers so fast and then six years later, this guy's made king. And check out yesterday's readings. You can just scroll back and forward from the, the link you have for the readings each morning here at Sunrise Stroll and Chat. And there we have that glorious moment of the sun coming out. It doesn't even form a reflection yet on the water. The light's not strong enough. But that's coming shortly. <clears throat> And then when he's seven years of age, that means he's of age, interesting, uh, he's made king with all the formality of that. But today's reading shows us another moment from a different perspective, the book of Chronicles, which is centuries later. And that's a big deal. You know, here we have another meditation, another contemplation of history, of biblical history done by an amazing writer who is or maybe a team of writers maybe a school that compiles the book of Chronicles and we see Joash the king following into the exact same mess and he becomes influenced by the princess obviously what's a seven year old you know what chance does he have and he ends up killing the son of the high priest who protected him, who helped him, who saved him, who was devoted to him. And that is Zechariah, the prophet. And actually, he's also mentioned by Jesus about the killing of the prophets. In Matthew's gospel there towards the end before the Passion maybe around chapter 23 or so I'd like to check for you but this is this is fascinating this is absolutely fascinating 
you know, for many different aspects. So I, I was thinking about this morning just this pattern, this pattern of how people are watching the unfolding of history and contemplating it and taking lessons from it. Just like flowers open in the morning with the sun, the facts of history blossom in our hearts to form our mind and our soul. Oops, go easy there, camera. Yeah, I didn't. I was almost going to spring around and do a loop and I didn't. Look what we have up here. We already saw the sun rising and there's the moon setting over Mount Arbel here. And oh, we got those birds right in the camera there. Speedy birds. The ability to contemplate, to contemplate nature and also to contemplate history, to contemplate our own lives, to go back to our youth, to go back to those formative years. And maybe with perspective, we can see our faults and failings, our timidity, or our hurt, our fears, our desires, our ambitions, our angers. Oh, wow. That was a big one there, a big purple heron. There she comes out under the sun. Oops, I didn't have close enough perspective for you, sorry. She's gone. And if you put all that together with the readings we have today for our reflection, the book of Chronicles, the Psalm, the gospel passage concretely, and then the about, um, well, I have to go back now, my memory is failing me. You see the lights beginning to reflect now on the water. So we're entering into a school of formation, how you approach scripture. Remember our two kids yesterday asleep here? <laughs> They slept across the pathway. I mean, how couldn't I not wake them up? Gosh, I woke up one of them. I felt guilty about it. On the way back, they were both still asleep. To learn to read the scripture as a whole. And that's what the book of Chronicles does, or the two books of Chronicles, you know. They go back to really Adam and Eve. And to go all the way up to the return from the exile and Esdras. Oh, look at our little fellow here, the one we saw yesterday. He was out there grazing. Oh, well, there was more of them here. Another fellow over behind him. You're okay, buddy. We're not going to hurt you. And now he's comfortably eating. That's beautiful, isn't it? He figures we're not going to hurt him. That's marvelous. This guy is called... 
Oh boy, I have forgotten the name I told you yesterday. Um, they were farmed for fur and the business never flew well and then they were let loose into the wild. And they live in little families and the name still escapes me. That's my memory in the morning, people. Now, if we draw a little closer, will he be okay? Yeah, well, he's, he's scuttling away there under the plants. So, I think we've got the best of him so far. There he is under these plants here, so. Goodbye, little fellow. Well, you can see the hole where he went through there. And then right there. Oh, the Nutria, exactly, Nutria. Very good, good for you, thank you. I just happened to see the comment. I don't see all the comments as they go in. Obviously for various reasons, looking where I'm walking, looking at other details of the screen. learn to read scripture as a whole. Sometimes people abuse a text, taking it out of context. And from our perspective as believers, it's one whole mystery of God communicating with humanity. So scripture deserves to be read as a whole. And if somebody were just to take the passage yesterday of the horrendous deeds of the mother of Joash, and then the incredibly forceful and violent response to her, then one could write off sacred scripture as a total mess. And then the full light dawns for scripture in, in the crucifixion and the resurrection. And the call to glory for every one of us with that light shining through us. In the midst of all of our challenges and difficulties learn to read scripture in its totality in its complete the complete story not just a section that gets me going but to be schooled by the whole of scripture we can see that particularly in Jesus because his words and the entire New Testament I would say that whole community that produces the New Testament they're people who really read the whole of scripture and they connect the dots it's not their merit primarily because that's the work of the Holy Spirit, but we need to be open to the Holy Spirit to read scripture well. I'm enclosing a link this morning in this, the notes to, the, to this sunrise stroll and chat, a link of commentary on the book of Chronicles. And um, uh, it, I'm sure you can find many others and you can research them and see them, but this is, um, just a help, a suggestion, in order to become more familiar with sacred scripture and how it works. You see, this uh, jet ski works in a certain way. It has its gears, it has its its equilibrium, it has its ability for water, it has its motor, it has its balance. And we need to work it the way it's, it should be worked. It can't be worked like a motorbike or like a car. And it has properties a car doesn't have because don't try going with your car on the lake. It doesn't work like an airplane, it works like a jet ski. And sacred scripture works like sacred scripture. So let's expose ourselves to the objectivity of sacred scripture. It's fact, also how it has shaped culture. There are so many different avenues of exploration. I have a little problem. I updated the settings on the little old iPhone I have here. But I'm not sure if I can get in to see the readings. Oh yeah, I can, I think I can. Uh, because it reloaded. So 
I think I'll have it in a second. But the same pattern we had yesterday. Wow, there he goes. He throws his, his rod. Oops, that was a long shot here. I wonder if he has anything coming. He's perching it here now so he can rest a little and watch if there's any biting going on. So isn't that amazing that we have this psalm, um, forever I will maintain my love for my servant, meaning David literally, and meaning all his descendants, the line of David. And we see Jesus being referred to by the Father as my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Forever I will maintain my love for my servant. Again, to understand that particular line of the psalm, and right through its extension to Jesus and through all those baptized in him, you see how we need the whole connection of Scripture together. Not tear apart a little limb of Scripture, and set it up absolutely on its own. And at the same time, each word of God can also give us a lot of inspiration. God is love. That, those three words from St. John's letters, God is love, you know, or the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Of course, that line can, in its few words, can really charge our lives like a battery can't be charged much, you know, so quickly. It, it will charge us like, amazingly. And so each word of scripture also is very powerful, but all of scripture deserves to be understood together. And that takes time. And we also gain insight as we grow and suffer and succeed and are challenged. There's a little family taking a picture at the sunrise. Isn't that lovely? Dad with his five children taking a beautiful picture of his family there, with the, surely with the sunrise in the background, you know. That's how families do that. They, they open their children to the beauty of nature, to that uh, extraordinary gift we have in creation. So early at sunrise, you know, the children are up to see the sun rising. In the same way, also, families introduce their children to Scripture, you know, reading the stories of the Bible in an appropriate way for children. You definitely wouldn't start with yesterday's story. Some people might go their whole lives long without having any uh, knowledge of that lady from yesterday. Preparing breakfast here for that family. Isn't that lovely? Here at the fire of, of two fires. Look at these two fires. Oops. I want to get the fire together with the with the sun. It's too low for my position here. The, the fire ish and the shemesh. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, Sabal Khir. The hello tear in the Yeladim in the shemesh. people here.
forever I will maintain my love for my servant. And the part of that love is instructing us to live in truth, to live in wisdom. And there we see these lines of the gospel, no one can serve two masters. And Joash was installed as king to represent God for his people. Political leaders are installed to take care of the common good of the people and they'll answer for it in the last judgment before God. But then they become slaves to others and the princes prevail on the king to get rid of Zechariah and to kill him. And so that king, young king, goes on to kill the son of the man who protected him so he could be rightfully king. Amazing the contradictions of life. Wow, these are some vehicles. God bless all who drive them and protect their lives because they, they go in places that aren't easy to drive. Amazing the technology, the ability of our culture, both financially and technically to create all these tools of entertainment and distraction, recreation, recreation vehicles. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life worth more than clothing, than food? Look at the birds of the sky. They do not sow or reap. They gather nothing into barns. Your heavenly Father knows what you need. Seek first the kingdom of God. People, I think I went over time this morning, but it was a very interesting morning. Thank you for uh, joining, for being here for this conversation, for your comments. God bless you. See you later, alligators. Don't forget to check out the link on the Book of Chronicles there. It's a nice learning experience to learn more about the history of Scripture, about the writers, about the purpose of Scripture, about the, why they wrote those books, about the benefit they have for us. God bless you.